What's up, everyone? It's your Glashow Alkaline Smart Water Bottled Guy. Your bottled water individual here, <laughs> talking about a band that has been really hyped recently. Perhaps overhyped is what some people would say. It's a progressive metalcore band from Texas called Invent Animate. Used to be a comma in there, and now there's no longer a comma. Well, I haven't really heard of this band until just a couple years ago, so I had to look up their history. They've had numerous lineup changes. They had two albums come out early in their history, 2014's Everchanger and 2016's Still World. Now, these two albums, they, their covers are really intriguing and cool looking, so if I had seen them, I probably would have listened to them. And they look vaguely familiar, but I can't say I'd heard any of these songs. They also released a 2020 album called Grayview. They were signed to Tragic Hero Records. They got a new vocalist before this album, Grayview. It was their last on Tragic Hero. And now they've signed to the Australian label, UNFD. Everybody I've heard from UNFD I really like. So when I saw they signed to them and this album was coming out, I was very excited. And I was way more excited because in 2021, I heard their EP, The Sun Sleeps As It Never Was. Two heavy songs with an interlude in between them. It was fantastic. I think it's on my top albums and EPs of 2021. I mean, I loved that. I was like, wow, this band is everything I like about metalcore. And if I'm being honest, everything I like about metalcore, Invent Animate does. Electronic elements, lots of screaming, singing, some progressive kind of guitar riffs that, you know, aren't same old, same old, but some really infectious melodies and great choruses. That's pretty much what everybody's been saying about Invent Animate and this new album, Heavener. Now that I mentioned them having a new lead singer, his name is Marcus Vick. I believe he's from Sweden, but the other three guys in the band have been there since the beginning. And I've seen people say that this is the best album in metalcore that's not made by architects. I've also seen people say that this is overhyped trash. So we're gonna break it down and let you know what it what what what's up with this new album, Invent Animate Heavener. Is it worth the hype or not? After I pressed play on the first track. Absence, persistent, oh my goodness, I was blown away. Like I said, this band does everything I like about metalcore. And if I really liked that EP as the sun sleeps as it never was, I knew I was going to love this because it started off sounding very similar. There's just chugging riffs, some progressive technical parts in there, a singing chorus, some clean vocals. I mean, Marcus Vick's range is fantastic. He's got snarls. He's got angelic choruses. He's all over the place, and this first song is just a whirlwind, a, just a complete roller coaster, and that's kind of what this album is. The only problem I would say, and I'll just go ahead and say it, is it just kind of gets a little same old, same old, because metalcore, it's kind of hard to differentiate yourself sometimes, and they literally throw everything but the kitchen sink here, for the most part. I think there might be some other things they could do. They mix it up from super heavy to not so heavy to really ambient. They do everything, but if you like your metalcore with screaming and singing, a la Devil Wears Prada, uh, some Bring Me the Horizon, that kind of stuff, then you'll absolutely love this. And the Gent kids are absolutely going bonkers over this, saying that this is the best album ever. Again, it starts off pretty fantastic, so I was like, man, maybe they're onto something. The second song, Shade Astray, is probably my favorite song on this album. It is intense, but it has a beautiful chorus, and it's just the contrast of the heavy and the knots in the, in the beautiful choruses that just really turned me on to them. Labyrinthine, another great song. Without a whisper though, for me, I know it's one of their lead singles and it has a cool video, but to me, compared to the high quality of tracks that they started us off with, the fourth track kind of is eh, because there's not very much screaming on it. It's more ambient, a lot more singing, some electronic elements thrown in there. But then False Meridian really picks it back up, but there's just nothing to distinguish it from those previous three songs that were so good. So it's like, well, you know, okay, they're back to doing what they do, but is this any different from what they were doing at the beginning? And I could see people kind of checking out at this point because the next song, Reverie, it's like an interlude. It's really soft. It's like two minutes long. It's just kind of a place to be there. It doesn't really serve a purpose. It could lose you. Then the song Immolation of Night is just the complete opposite of Without a Whisper. Instead of being all ambient and soft vocals, this is all screaming, all heavy technical guitars. I mean, talk about the technical riffs here. 
man, there's chugging, but there's also stuff that just differentiates it and makes them a progressive metalcore band and not just, say, somebody that's just your typical metalcore band. That's why a lot of people, I think, have respect for this band because of the technical guitar parts on here, the stuff that sounds difficult, the stuff that the nerdy metal kids really get into. But, you know, I think it sounds great. And Immolation of Night, while being one of the heavier songs on the album, it's not the best song. I know it has a good, it's just like Without a Whisper. They're kind of like polar opposites on the album. Everything kind of lies in between, and that's what I really like. The stuff that's heavy and soft. Immolation of Night is all heavy. It's a great song, but it's not my favorite on here. Purity Weeps, though. Oh my goodness, it's probably my second favorite track on the album besides Shade Astray. It has the second most beautiful chorus on here. And again, it just shows that contrast between heavy and like poppy almost you know they, they do it very well this album is produced by the self-produced by the band as well as Landon tours of the band of the plot and you i've been a huge fan of the plot and you all throughout their history they've gone some directions that i haven't really vibed with but then the next album i'll get back on board so anytime the plot and you releases something i always listen and Landon tours is if, if there's one thing i'll give the plot and you they're not my favorite band. They haven't played some of my favorite music, but they're not afraid to take risks, and that's very rare in metalcore. Invent, Animate, I, would, I wouldn't say they're taking enough risks, if I'm being honest, but they do take some, and I think in, people are saying this is their crowning achievement, this is their album, and I would agree with people saying that, yes, they've come a long way, but I still think they have more in them, guys. I know people are saying like this is the best metalcore album ever, and... It does rise above the rest. Most metalcore bands, as people accuse them of, kind of all sound same old, same old. There's enough here from Invent Animate to set them apart. However, again, the last three tracks are all great. Void Surfacing, good song, but it just sounds like you took different parts of an architect's songs and put them together. Ember Emberglow, a nice, softer track. Elysium, and those last two songs just fantastic have good choruses the only thing i'm saying is at 46 minutes this album may overstay its welcome a little bit but they have so many technical and guitar parts that it's like well what would you take out so would you cut a couple songs i mean who knows it's just it kind of bogs it down it, it is a long listen if you like it from the beginning you'll know absence per, absence persistent the first track that's all you need to hit play on i'd say stick around if you don't really like absent persistent wow that's a tongue twister you will like shade you could like shade astray i won't say you will but if you like absence persistence you'll like shade astray labyrinthine is another so strong one like i said it does kind of eh, plateau off for there for a while it's not as strong and then it kind of weakens in the middle and then picks back up towards the end but the end it's just kind of like oh these sound like the first three songs but not quite as well done like i said purity weeps is top caliber song but void surfacing ember glow and elysium are like yeah these are good but they just sound like what i've already heard and that kind of kills it especially because the stuff in the middle is so different reverie again very different kind of interlude song immolation of night all heavy without a whisper kind of more ambient but you know the last three they're just back to the same old same old and they're just not reinventing the wheel they do add some interesting elements here it makes for an extremely pleasant listen if you like metalcore which is why like i said the gent kids are giving it 90s and above in their reviews, but the people are reading it and going, oh, this is so overhyped. This just sounds like everything every other metalcore band has done. And they're, that's a fair point. But I don't know if any other metalcore band is doing it as smoothly, as cleanly, and with choruses that get stuck in your head like this. I mean, maybe Bring the Horizon, maybe The Devil Wears Prada, and I mean, those are some of the legends of metalcore. So for Invent Animate to be on their fourth album, and to have come so far from relatively unknown Texas band to changing their, I believe his name was Ben English, the original vocalist, he left, and now they have a new vocalist, Marcus Fick, and for him to take over, show his range, and for everything else in the band to just still work as seamless as it does and sound so great, this band can pat themselves on the back. I know they've toured with all the big guys, so maybe they've taken uh, little bits of inspiration from their touring mates, but they do rise to the cream of the crop when it comes to metalcore they do stick their heads above the crowd and make themselves known on this album like i said they're not reinventing the wheel this is not a genre defining it could be a genre defining album but it's not a genre changing or pushing 
metalcore forward by any means, but it's a fantastic listen if you like metalcore. It's a great workout album, I'll tell you that. It's uh, so heavy at parts. It's so angelic at other parts. I know that's a weird word to use for metal, but it really is. The vocals are fantastic, and they're so well produced. Got to give the production here all the credit in the world. So I've said some good things about this album. I've said some bad things. So what kind of score am I going to give it? Like I said, I personally listen to it a lot. There are a couple songs there in the middle I may skip. or So it makes it hard to listen to as an entire album. But I always come back to my favorite songs, Shade Astray, Purity Weeps. I mean, even Immolation of Night, if I want a real heavy song, are always going to stand out. I don't know if this will make uh, the album of the year chart at the end, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5. I think that's a solid enough score. So congrats to Invent Animate for continuing to progress their sound. But for people that are saying that this is the polished diamond, I think you guys still have a little bit more work to do, but this is a strong statement of intent. I really like what they did on their EP in 2021. This does build off of it, and it's 11 tracks of them perfecting that sound. So congratulations, guys. And I hope to see you guys come near my area and tour. If I see you guys come anywhere near with a five-hour driving distance, man, I will be there because it sounds like these guys probably put on a kick-butt show. Anyone who's been to an Invent Animate show, please tell me how it is because I think they sound great, and I want to know if it's worth my time driving. But, uh, yeah, that's the review for Invent Animate's Heavener. Definitely go check it out if you like anything metal, alt-rock, Especially if you're into alt-rock, but you're looking for an album that has screaming, but you're not yet real into screaming, but you don't want to dive completely into the metal and hardcore scene, give this a try. It's a nice jumping-off point. I think that might also be why so many people are giving it a high score. It might be their first taste into metalcore, and if it is, this is a good first taste. It'll leave a pleasant taste in your mouth. Well, thank you for watching. I'm sure we have more reviews coming up. As I said, the Bottled Water Guy channel is expanding into talking more about sports, geography, whatever the heck I want to. Uh, so the next video is going to be a geography video. If you want to see top 10 cities in the southeast, be on the lookout for that. And as I promised, I am going to make that video of bands that deserved better, a new series. I will get that underway, and the first video will be on balance and composure. One of my favorite, probably my favorite band of all time if not Tiny Moving Parts. Those are two of my favorites. There'll definitely be a Tiny Moving Parts video coming in the future, and I plan to do another album deep dive like I did on Short Fictions, but this time on Khaki Cuff's debut album. Khaki Cuff's a really good emo band that is, I don't know, reformed or just come back from hiatus or kicked out a member and chugged along. I don't know. They were gone for a while. They're back now, but keep a lookout for all those videos. Again, thanks for watching. I do have a nine to nine job, so, uh, I don't know when all those videos will get made, but I promise you I'm slowly working on them. And uh, thanks for watching this review of Invent Animates Heavener. Again, give it a 7.5. Check it out if you like anything heavy. If you don't, at least give Shade Astray a listen. It's worth your time.